Being very entitled and controlling, narcissists have no difficulty stepping all over your personal boundaries, so that's why I put together an extensive video class called This Is Me. It has 25 videos, written documents, guided questions. I'm gonna teach you how to have healthy boundaries. There's a link below, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. A primary skill that's necessary for personal growth and maturation is introspection. And by that, I mean that you, you would have a willingness to examine yourself honestly and objectively, and you can have a lot of analytical thinking that goes along with that. You can see what's going on inside of who you are, and you're very willing to ask the why question. When you a answer the question, why, why do I respond the ways that I do, then that can actually feed the what question. So here's what I'm going to do as a result of what I understand about myself. And as a therapist, when somebody would come into my office and they had that kind of mindset, it would be like, oh, this is why I do what I do, because it can be so productive. Now, a primary trait that's shared by virtually every narcissist is a lack of what I just described. Narcissists will approach people thinking, I already know everything I need to know. And if you give me some input, it's probably something that, you know, is already inside my head anyway. It's a waste of your time to try to tell me what to do. And if you want me to wallow in some sort of personal self-reflection, all that proves is you just want to demonize me. You just, uh, you, you want me to think that I'm a bad person and I'm not going to let that happen. And there's actually an element of paranoia that can go along with this. Now, as part of their uh, false portrayal of themselves, they carefully then will, uh, will try to craft a certain kind of image that they project onto the world. Uh, they'll conveniently overlook their own personal flaws. And if they do have to admit certain problems, sometimes it's glaringly obvious, they predictably will put the burden of their problems onto people out there. They can't look in here. That's what analytical thinking is all about. They can't do that. And so this sets up one of the most common defense mechanisms that narcissists will use, and they use it constantly, and that's the mechanism of projection. You've heard me talk about that before. When we have a person that uses projection, First, it requires that individual to deny their own personal problems to themselves, if possible. And then second, they'll rationalize internally uh, their own goodness, and they'll rationalize if there's anything negative, why it really isn't their fault. And then uh, after that, then they'll displace their own faults onto others. Denial, rationalization, and displacement. And then uh, what that does is it prompts them to uh, to refuse to see in themselves their issues, but instead they'll see their problems inside you. That's classic projection. Now, since this is part of their false self, let's keep in mind, dishonesty and manipulation is built into the equation with their projections. And it's going to be so essential because the, the person that's going to receive the projection is you or whoever's close in their life. So what I'd like to do is go through seven of the most common scenarios where are types of projections that a narcissist will apply to you. And then let, let's see, uh, see what this might mean to you and the way that you respond. Now, one of the first and most common projections that narcissists will apply to you is they may say something like, I so dislike how you try to control me. They'll accuse you of being controlling. Now, let's keep in mind, they can uh, they have a never-ending agenda for you. They're critical, they're bossy, they're pushy, they're stubborn. They give lots of unsolicited advice. And yet, when they encounter you, particularly when you're at a stalemate, there you are. Uh, I'm controlling, which they won't admit. Let's talk about you and your control problem. Basically, when they're saying that, is uh, what they're saying is you're not doing what I want you to do. A second projection that's so common to narcissists is they may say something like, everything you do in public is just for show. In other words, you're a phony. Now, of course, these people are constantly posturing, 
They like to saddle up uh, next to the desirable individuals. Uh, they absolutely will not be personally vulnerable. They just want to look and appear as if they're the one who's the gold standard. And yet somehow you are the one who is out there trying to showboat in a false kind of way. Go figure. A third common projection that they use is, I can't get through to you ever. They'll see you as, as uh, uh, pathologically defensive when in fact, no, actually it's them. They stonewall and uh, they can, can try to control you with passive aggressiveness. They'll refuse to discuss any kind of uh, uh, difficult conversation in, a, in, a def in, a, in an adult fashion. And yet somehow they'll say, I just find you to be very difficult to, to discuss problems with, even though they have all their own issues. A fourth common projection that they'll put onto you is they may say something like, you just want people to cater to you. In other words, you're selfish. Now, of course, let's overlook the fact that these individuals are highly entitled. Enough is never enough. They're always wanting more, more, more from other individuals. They're very needy. They want admiration. They, they crave uh, uh, some sort of affirmation. And yet somehow, you're the problem. A fifth common projection that they'll uh, place onto you is they may say something like, you have some serious anger issues. And, uh, and of course, they love it whenever they begin provoking you and arguing with you. When you then come back with an argumentative response, uh, they're going to eat that up. Now, let's overlook the fact in their minds that they can all that they can have this chronic simmering agitation. It takes very little to bring out their annoyance and their irritability. They can snap. They can sometimes speak in a harsh and mean kind of way. They can go into the passive aggressive mode. They, they can lose their composure quickly. But you have anger issues. That's how projection works. Or a sixth common projection is they may say something like, "I can't trust you." You're just not an honest person. Now, this one is one of those that can just drive you absolutely nuts because as you get to know them, you realize you keep a lot of secrets. Uh, you're not, you're not uh, forthcoming at all about who you are. You're very willing to lie. You're very willing to cover up whatever kind of flaws that might make you look less than wonderful. You can speak in half-truths. You can feed information to other individuals on a need-to-know basis only. And yet they'll say, I can't trust you. That's how they work. Or then finally, a seventh common projection that they'll uh, place onto you. They may say something like, you don't know people like I do. And, and, or you know, they may say uh, kind of a corollary to that. You don't know how to handle situations like I do. And the implication is you're not a very tuned in person. You're not very empathetic. And yet in their own personal lives, they use people. They learn things and facts about other individuals for the sake of manipulations. They really don't care about the interior of another individual. They don't know and appreciate the essence of love. In fact, it can be uh, non-existent in the classical sense of what love truly is. And yet you're the problem. And so you can see that these are some of the most common ways that the narcissists will project their unfinished business onto you. The name of their game is gaslighting. That's another very familiar term that we have. They want to keep you off balance. They want you to feel insecure about who you are. And so when they put so much of this blame and displacement onto you, then that allows them to come in and, and rationalize why it's okay for them to dominate you. It's all very much a part of a game. Much of it is so habituated that it's, uh, it's has become somewhat subconscious, but there it is. Now, I, I want you to think, uh, when, when you push back, when they throw these rationalizations at you and, and you start arguing with them, that's not true, or why do you say these things? Uh, you know what they're gonna do. <laughs> this is another projection. See, this just proves how impossible of a person you are to deal with. So when you know that this is what's going on and you're able to see it for what it is, first and foremost, be a self-aware person. 
I'm, I'm hoping you can be the kind of person that simply says, you know, I, I really do like to know what my pluses and my minuses are. I want to be objective about who I am. And I, I think that I'm a, an, an honest individual. Be a student of your own lifestyle patterns and, and be a, a, a somebody that says I'm constantly in a learning kind of mindset. Also, another thing that I'm hoping that can happen with you, knowing that this is uh, going to happen, make sure you do have somebody that you trust that you can be accountable to. Now, I'm hoping that you can have somebody that you can talk with, uh, where you can discuss your pluses and minuses and your highs and lows and how you might have done things better, but can do it in, such, in a, a constructive way. This could be a therapist, it could be a friend, it could be you know someone that you uh, have high regard for. Then, in addition, as you're trying to figure out how you're going to respond to this, Know what's driving that narcissist. These are people who are pathologically insecure, but they cover that insecurity by trying to dominate other individuals. If they can somehow get inside your brain and tell you how you're supposed to think, then that, uh, that somehow solves their problem. And then above all, as you engage with these people, stop defending. Uh, there's, there's no need to, uh, to try to explain over and over and over why you're right and they're wrong. Just uh, putting it plain and simple, does the narcissist ever listen to you in a meaningful kind of way? And I think you know the answer to that. A narcissist accusations are very commonly a thinly veiled confession. They're revealing what they're dealing with on the inside, but they're putting it onto you. Know that that's what you're dealing with. Uh, again, they can't be honest, which basically means when they put these projections onto you, you're dealing with someone who is not credible. Keep that in mind as you respond. Now, I hope the video such as this can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. We're going to continue to bring more videos toward you. And I hope this part is part of a, a cumulative effort on your uh, uh, side to, uh, to educate yourself. If you have a need for therapy, and many times when you're dealing with something like this, that can be most helpful. You know that I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. There's a link below that will take you to their website. It's accessible, it's affordable, it's effective, uh, and, and it can be so helpful. Now, I mean, I mean, I'm a therapist. I have been for years. I'm retired now. Uh, it can be so helpful to have somebody to sift this out with you in that objective kind of way that we're talking about. So please seek the help that you would need if that's the case. Likewise, I have courses that I put together and they're very extensive. I put a lot of work into them. Uh, each course, it's like signing up for an online class, has at least 25 videos with written documentation per video, guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making healthy connections. We have free to be about finding yourself despite those controllers. This is me about establishing the necessary boundaries. We also have my webinars. We have a podcast. We have many articles on my website. We have my books, lots of resources. Narcissists can't self-reflect. Uh, analytical thinking is something that escapes them. Uh, instead, what they do is they see out there what they won't come to terms with in here. No, that's what you're dealing with. And uh, that being the case, I'm hoping you can decide, well, I want to be somebody who's a, a reflective person. I like learning and knowing who I am, pluses and minuses. And when you're able to be honest with yourself like that, it positions you to be much more steady in your approach towards people. And ultimately, I hope it leads you to a place of peace.